Well, I want to explain two things that are kind of general and have nothing to do with the specific software you use. Uh, I gotta show you how did I create this uh, the topology for this model. Uh, and well, uh, there is like three uh, groups of edge loops uh, that you have to build, uh, and they are around the around the eyes. You've got to have these nice loops, and around the mouth. And uh, there's one that is very important too, uh, that is this group, uh, this group of edge loops that come behind the mouth and around, uh, behind behind the nose and around the mouth, up to the other side. And uh, all of this is very important uh, because you have to be aware of uh, the wrinkles and deformation that occurs in the face. Uh, when you model something in 3D with your face, with the face of your model relaxed, you don't need uh, all these edge loops to be there uh, to, to create the shape that you want. But you have to, you have, to have them if you want to give your character a uh, good expression and what I'm going to do is I will show you some pictures of faces of people and you have to be aware uh, for example this one which is smiling you have to be aware of these creases that form around the mouth deep creases you have to have this edge loop I told you uh, from the mouth and around uh, from the nose and around the mouth to be able to make this kind of expression and this photograph is kind of stream it's the most extreme smile i I was able to found out there, but in any other, you will notice that these creases appear, and to make this, you need to have these edge loops in your model. And the same the same thing, the same edge loops but uh, in a different expression uh, are also so important. For example, if you see this guy here with uh, his sad face, maybe he's missed a goal or something, um, you, you notice that these creases appear but uh, now they are behind behind the mouth and that's why these edge loops come from the nose and behind the mouth because you have to give them some sort of continuity as they they have uh, in the expressions in the real face. So I'm going to show you how my model forms with this. And I had a I had a problem when I was building it because I I really I missed this this group that I told you of edge loops, and I had kind of uh, the edge loops around the eyes and the edge loops are all around the mouth, uh, but uh, I had an edge loop coming from from the from the nose and not going behind the mouth but up to the ear. And I had to, I had to change it because I I couldn't get that crease I told you. Now I changed it and now it works perfectly. I, I will show you in a moment. So you see, if I pull up this control, you are able to see how the mesh deforms and create this kind of the formation, this kind of deep crease here. And it helps uh, create the illusion of a more genuine smile. And the same same thing if 
I create a sad face. You see, it's, it's very subtle. I didn't want it to be like too extreme, for this is a cartoon character, but it's there, it's definitely there. You see, it's how the mesh deforms here. So, uh, definitely, uh, face topology is very important if you want to create a living character. And I'm not explaining this any further because there's a lot of uh, tutorials and information out there. Uh, but I I want to I want to tell you that this is very important and it's important that you dig a bit more because it's it's going to push your character uh, expression very very far so i also want to uh, have you take a look uh, in how did i set up the bones i basically put uh, a bone uh, near the surface of the skin in the places where I wanted it to move and this uh, placement for the bones is more or less related to uh, where muscles in the real face would be uh, so you see uh, these bones uh, in the forehead will be corresponding to the muscles here and also uh, this circular muscle around the lips will be uh, represented by these uh, bones around the mouth these eight bones around the mouth and uh, these strips of muscle in the side of the mouth from the cheekbone to the upper uh, part of the lips and from the side of the of the mouth, from the side of the jaw to the sides of the lips, will be represented by these bones here. As you see, and these bones will more or less work in the same way that uh, real muscles will be working. For example, when you smile, when you smile. These strips of muscles here will contract and will create create this same sort of movement that I created when I pulled my my point. So basically, you have to put a bone where you need a cluster of vertices to move together. And so in my setup, I, I've got these three bones in the forehead, uh, bone for for every eye and for every one of of the eyelids, from the up for the upper and lower eyelids, and they are pretty much uh, aligned together. Not exactly in the same place because I, I was having problem copying the weights from one side to the other, and I decided to do it this way. And also, uh, I have these ones in the cheekbones, this one under the eye, and this one that would be like in the middle of this muscle here. This would be the end of that muscle, and behind the nose, this last one, and it's pretty much, it's, it's symmetric, it's the same for the other side of the face. And if if you build uh, a structure of bones like this one, you you don't need anything else. It's uh, quite. I've got all I need to build uh, a great variety of faces. So you must be wondering how do I move my bones? How do I make them change? from one shape um, to other different shape. Well, 
the most common way to do to do facial animation has been uh, morpher modifiers. Modifiers. Morpher modifiers let you change in the shape of an object, like, uh, and you do this like duplicating it, duplicating the object, uh, re-sculpting the object, and then uh, adding a special modifier that lets you. Uh, interpolate from one shape and onto the other. If you look at uh, 3ds Max help help file, uh, you can find plenty of information about it. In our case, we will do this uh, bone position morphing, so to call it, uh, by using uh, cat local adjustment layers. Uh, that will be these layers will be on top of our base rigging layer, and of, of course on, on top of the layer that we will use for the animation of the rest of the body. When you animate in CAD, you have uh, different kinds of layers uh, that you can combine to create the, your motion. Uh, there is this absolute layer that over overwrites everything that has it has behind it and there's also uh, local layers uh, which you can use uh, to uh, adjust uh, a part of the movement uh, setting posi positions to only a few of the bones not the whole skeleton so I have an example prepared, and uh, as you'll see, uh, I created three local layers uh, and post them. This one open, it's got its open mouth, and I also had to move the jaw wide. It's uh, like stretching the lips. Outside, a narrow, so making a narrow, narrow lip shape. And uh, what we will do in the next part of the tutorial is uh, we will connect these weight spinners. That, as, as you can see, it's all you need. in order to animate this face. I, I will connect the spinners to uh, the controls I've created, so it's much easier to animate. Right now, I, I could uh, just move, animate the weights, and animate the body, the, the character, like that, but it's really uncomfortable, and I want to do this with my panel. So we can make this connection uh, in a few ways, but uh, maybe the easier is the reaction manager dialog. I will create a new scene and show you how it looks in a simple example. 